On behalf of the DBCPS Research Group, we'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen to us. Our hope and goal is that by the end of this message, you'll have a fresher picture of how to move forward in the process of building a stable future while avoiding conflict. Since finding an optimal solution is impossible without first considering the context that it arises from, let's start with a broad view of the issues. As you know, Kirkuk is a city with tremendous emotional significance for the Kurdish people. It lies on the border of a disputed territory, right where the semi-autonomous region of Kurdistan, nominally a province under the rule of Baghdad, but with a unique degree of independence, meets the non-Kurdish rest of Iraq. Some of you watching undoubtedly belong to the city's sizable minority populations, Arab and Turkmen, whose numbers rose due to Saddam Hussein's anti-Kurdish campaign. The dilemma is, should Kirkuk be part of Kurdistan, which the Kurds prefer, or main Iraq, which the Arab and Turkmen would like? All of you have a reasonable stake in the future of the place you and your parents have called home. This is where natural resources come in. Your city is surrounded by 17% of Iraq's petroleum reserves, so whoever controls Kirkuk could claim those oil revenues. Your powerful neighboring countries are concerned that these revenues, were they to go to Kurdistan, could serve as a catalyst to Kurdistan formally declaring independence from Iraq. This would invariably lead to international conflict, as countries like Iran and Turkey have their own Kurdish minorities that they don't wish to see strengthened. Therefore, you should be aware that any solution needs to address the dispute on two levels, the local, demographic one that immediately affects you, and the state one over oil between the Kurdish regional government and its nominal sovereign Iraq, with the other regional governments as interested parties. Prospects for avoiding conflict have focused around Article 140 of the Iraqi Constitution. Instituted in 2005, it calls for repatriating the Kurds from Kirkuk, whom Hussein drove away, and then a referendum in which the Kirkukis would democratically vote to join either Kurdistan or Iraq. Baghdad has delayed the vote for the past six years for fear of an outcome favoring Kurdistan, but all parties feel that any real solution must come through that vote. The issue is, how can you clear the road to make sure that vote actually does occur? On the local level, the first step you can take towards a mutually agreeable solution is recognizing that you have common interests. Great progress has occurred on this front so far. Your fellow citizens of Kirkuk, who happen to have been born into different ethnic groups, all desire vastly improved city services, all chafe under Baghdad's financial regime in everything from education funding to energy services, and all desperately want a return of security just as much as you do. Bombs don't discriminate who they kill. Violence in the area hurts everyone. In a remarkable testament to everyone's desire to avoid conflict, consider that none of the different ethnic groups around you have taken credit for such attacks, admitted to sponsoring retaliations, or even spoken positively of the violence. The terrorism is a result of radical Islamists and agents of foreign countries attempting to disrupt the peace process, not your neighbors. The leadership of our Turkmen and Arab viewers, therefore, should work out a provisional power-sharing agreement with the KRG that would guarantee minorities special status in the Kirkuk government regardless of the outcome of the vote. At the moment, each community is legally insured a minimum number of seats in the Kirkuk City Council and a recent understanding divides influential positions among ethnic groups. The mayor belongs to one group, the speaker of the city council to another, and so forth. This framework has helped establish a network of trust far stronger than what existed only a few years ago. Encouraging your leaders to preserve this framework through a potential transition into the KRG will maintain the stake that you hold in your city's future and the common trust that is the basis of your community. On the larger level, the KRG must be prepared to offer concessions to Iraq to secure the pathway to a vote. Kurds have always claimed that oil is of secondary importance to demographic concerns and the emotional significance of the area as a homeland. This is the opportunity for Kurdish leaders to demonstrate that they mean it. Holding on to the oil fields would be too logistically difficult to give you or the KRG any real advantage. As one expert puts it, even if the Kurds had Kirkuk, how would they get all of that oil out of a country which is landlocked? Through at the south of a disapproving Iraq? Through an unfriendly Turkey? Limiting the KRG's access to oil reserves and revenue would remove Iraq and its neighboring countries' principal basis for opposition. Baghdad would have no reason to continue to delay the referendum election in Kirkuk. We know you're worried about the impending U.S. troop withdrawal, but think of it as a catalyst for preventing future conflict rather than a doomsday event. Like you, all of your neighbors are desperately afraid of being engulfed in even more violence. At the end of the day, everyone wants peace and prosperity. Now is the time to overcome your fears and encourage your leaders to swallow their pride, make necessary concessions, and ensure a conflict-free future for you and your children.